Lesson 25 The Promise to David Yahweh telleth thee that he will make thee an house. Reading 2 Samuel 7 Objective To show the meaning of the promise that Yahweh made to David. To explain my resurrection is the essential doctrine of the promise to David. Background David now dwelt at rest in Jerusalem, 2 Samuel 7 verse 1. His own palace was complete and now one thing troubled him. The ark of Yahweh was still in the tent that David had set up for it. 2 Samuel 6 verse 17 He wanted to build a permanent house for Yahweh to dwell in. David requests to build an house. 2 Samuel 7 verses 1 to 9 David felt uncomfortable about the contrast between his own house of cedar and the curtains within which the ark of God dwelt. Verse 2 He explained his concern to Nathan. Seeing David's enthusiasm, he encouraged him. Do all that is in thine heart, for Yahweh is with thee. Verse 3 but Nathan had responded on the spur of the moment, and that night Yahweh told Nathan that he did not want David to build a house for him, in verse 5, but rather that Yahweh intended to build a house for David, verse 11. However, David's desire certainly pleased Yahweh. Thou didst well that it was in thine heart. 1 Kings 8 verse 18 Nathan's message stated that Yahweh had never asked for a solid dwelling, but had been content with a tent and a tabernacle. 2 Samuel 7 verses 6 to 7 He also reminded David that it was Yahweh who had done everything for him, bringing him from a shepherd to be the leader of his people. Verses 8 to 9 Could a man really make a dwelling? For the God of the universe, when Solomon eventually built a temple, he realized that the heavens could not contain Yahweh, how much less this house that I have built. 2 Kings 8 verse 27 The real dwelling of Yahweh is with the humble who tremble at or have reverence for his word. See Isaiah 66 verses 1 to 2. It is these people that Yahweh is building up into a house. Why did Yahweh not want David to build him a house? It was later explained that David could not build a house because he had shed much blood. First Chronicles 22 verses 8 to 10 It was therefore left to his son Solomon, whose name means peace, to build the house. He represents, or is a type of, Christ, the Prince of Peace, who shall build and enter the glorious house of prayer. What house would Yahweh build David? The house that Yahweh was to build David was a line of descendants or seed to sit upon his throne. The great seed of David is Christ who will reign over David's throne for a thousand years. The promise then applies to all of the seed of David, to Solomon, who Yahweh chose to be his son, 1 Chronicles 22 verse 10 and 1 Chronicles 28 verse 6 and build a house for Yahweh's glory. David's descendants who reigned upon his throne from Solomon to Zedekiah. Christ, who would be the seed who would finally fulfill the promise. The key elements of the promise. 2 Samuel 7 verses 10 to 17. There are seven key elements to this promise. 1. Israel will be settled in the land and at peace with all nations. Yahweh promised that he would appoint a place for his people Israel and plant them 
that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more. Verse 10 This has never been the case. Although Israel have been partially regathered, they do not live in peace, although hundreds of years after David. The prophets repeated the same words. I will perform that good thing which I have promised. Judah shall be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. Jeremiah 33 verses 14 to 15 They shall dwell safely and none shall make them afraid. Ezekiel 34 verses 28 to 29 And I will plant them upon their land. Amos 9 verses 14 to 15 Solomon reigned over Israel in a time of rest from war, with their enemies conquered in their reign of David. 1 Kings 5 verses 2 to 3 2. David's own seed would be established in his kingdom. Verse 12 When thy days be fulfilled, that is, after David's death, Yahweh would set up David's literal seed out of thy bowels, verse 12, as king. Peter taught the people that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Acts 2 verse 30 The Apostle Paul plainly tells us that of David's seed hath God according to his promise raised unto Israel a Saviour, Jesus. Acts 13 verse 23 Under the reign of Solomon, the kingdom of Israel at that time was the kingdom of Yahweh. 1 Chronicles 28 verse 5 3. The seed to build an house for God's name. Verse 13 David's seed would build an house for my name. Verse 13 There are two houses referred to. A spiritual house of people who as lively stones. 1 Peter 2 verse 5 are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, growing unto a holy temple in the Lord. Ephesians 2 verses 20 to 22. 2. A literal building which will be built as a house of prayer for all nations. Isaiah 56 verse 7. Solomon built an house which pointed forward to the one to be built by Christ. 1 Kings 5 verse 5 4. God as well as David to be his father. Verse 14 This seed would be different from all other men. In Hebrews 1 verse 5 these words are quoted of Jesus Christ. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. When the angel Gabriel came to Mary, he told her that her seed would be the son of the highest, and the Lord God would give unto him the throne of his father David. Luke 1 verses 30 to 33 Jesus was, as David's flesh and blood descendant, a mortal man with all the natural tendencies to sin that we have. But he was God's own son, and so he was able to triumph over sin and death. David thought about this part of the promise and prophesied the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell, the grave. Psalms 16 verse 10 Solomon was also called the son of God. 1 Chronicles 28 verse 6 5. God works with David's seed despite their iniquities. Verse 14. 
David's seed started with Solomon and followed right down to Christ. Yahweh knew that some of them would be wicked men, and yet he would continue to work with David's house to achieve his purpose despite the iniquity of David's seed. In the Psalms this idea is explained further. If his children forsake my law, if they break my statutes, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Psalms 89 verses 29 to 32 Christ did no sin. It was necessary for him to be sinless for the purpose of his Father to be effective. Therefore these thoughts of committing iniquity and chastisement did not apply to Christ personally. We must again take up the picture of the Son of God, as Christ being the head and the ecclesia being the body. Unlike the head, those who make up the body are not sinless. They are prone to sin and require the chastising of a father to develop godly characters. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Hebrews 12 verses 5 to 7 6. God's mercy to stay with David's son. Verse 15. God's mercy would not be taken from his son as it was taken from Saul. God rejected Saul because of his unfaithfulness. This son was sure to be faithful. Those who made up his body and followed the example of the head will not be rejected. Christ was raised from the dead to receive immortality. Acts 13 verses 33 to 34 tells us that this was the sure mercies of David. His resurrection confirmed that the promises to David would be fulfilled. All the faithful in Christ will also receive the sure mercies of David when Christ returns. Isaiah 55 verse 3 7. David's throne to be established forever before him. Verse 16. This was a wonderful promise to David that he would be there to see his seed set up on his throne. The restoration of David's throne becomes a clear teaching of the Bible. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David. Isaiah 9 verse 7 I will cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. Jeremiah 33 verse 15 Basic Bible Teaching Resurrection an essential teaching of the promise to David is the resurrection of Christ and David. In the promise, David was told that his seed would sit on his throne after his death, verse 12, but it would be in his presence, verse 16. How could this be? Only through David being raised from the dead to see Christ reigning as king, so he wrote, Thou shall quicken me again and bring me up from the depths of the earth. Psalm 71 verses 20 to 21 2. As he thought about the promise, he realized that for the promises to be fulfilled, his seed, Messiah, must be raised from the dead. If he was David's seed according to the flesh, Acts 2 verse 30, then he must be mortal, and yet he will reign forever. How can this be? Only through Christ being raised from the dead. David thought this through carefully, and then, being a prophet, he spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Acts 2 verse 31 why Christ must be the seed who fulfills the promise. This promise could not have been fulfilled in Solomon and his descendants because 1. Many years later the prophet still spoke of the fulfillment of the promises. 
Amos 9 verse 11 and Jeremiah 33 verses 12 to 26. 2. The terms of the promises to David are quoted in the New Testament of Christ. Hebrews 1 verse 5. 3. The last descendant of the line of David to reign from David's throne was Zedekiah, who was a profane and wicked prince. He was disposed and the kingship remains empty until he comes whose right it is and Yahweh will give it him. Ezekiel 21 verses 25 to 27 Principle for Living Appreciate God's Promises Peter speaks about God's promises as the exceeding great and precious promises. 2 Peter 1 verse 4 David was overawed at the promise that Yahweh had given to him and felt his own unworthiness. Who am I, O Lord God? 2 Samuel 7 verse 18 Not only did he feel the privilege of knowing the promise, verse 21, but he felt the privilege for his people Israel, whom God went to redeem for himself, verse 23. Yahweh had showed himself to be their God and they to be his people. Verse 24 The promises we have received should make us wonder at the love of God towards his Son and to us. Every day we must think of the blessings to be called to the promises. Through the promises we can escape the corruption of the world and have a hope of receiving the divine nature. 2 Peter 1 verse 4 The knowledge of the promises should humble us to continually appreciate the greatness of the blessing. Summary David wanted to build Yahweh a house, but Yahweh's plan was to build David a house. 2. Yahweh promised David that he would have a seed who would reign over David's throne forever. 3. The promise requires that Christ be raised from the dead, not to see corruption, and that David himself would be raised from the dead. David was moved by the greatness of the privilege that Yahweh had placed upon him, that he would see his seed reigning for the kingdom age on his throne restored. These lessons are the words taken from the Christadelphian Sunday School Association notes www.cssa.org asn.au used with permission. Email your questions to read the Bible to at gmail.com.